up good people welcome back and welcome if you're new welcome to in real time with me Michaela. on this channel it's just all about life in real time walking with christ in real time navigating life as a christian millennial married mom full-time worker all the things in real time just following this journey called life in real time apologies for the delay on this video god definitely slowed me down i was getting ahead of myself and trying to run the race that i was not intended to run and so i was slowing down and i'm only doing one verse today because that's where he kept me and so for those who have been here, y'all know that we are in the Proverbs 31 series. For those that are new, we are walking through Proverbs 31 from verse 10 to 31. On my birthday, or right before my birthday, just in my quiet time with God and praying and just asking him where he wanted me to focus and really that, like where did he want me to be in this moment in real time as I navigate and transition to this new year of life. And he put Proverbs 31 on my heart and the womanhood behind a Proverbs 31 woman, the importance of knowing that in all of this search for womanhood and all this search for wholeness and all this search for healing and all this search for who am I, it all boils down to my relationship with Christ. It all boils down to my intimacy with him. It all boils down to finding my worth in him, which then will allow me to experience the true woman that he intended for me to be. I got my hair cut and it's just so, it's so blunt. It's so not the focus of right now. Uh, we're in Proverbs 31 and we're doing verse 17 today. That's all we're doing. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. If I'm looking down, y'all, I have my notes. I'm gonna get a new setup one day to where my computer is in the view of me so y'all aren't wondering what I'm looking at, but I'm always looking either at my computer right here or my Bible in my lap. My setup is under construction right now because our basement is under construction and that's where I will be long term. So bear with me. Um, but let's jump into it. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. I always like to read other translations because I read the CSB translation mostly from my Bible. But it is so important, y'all, to go read other translations. For sure, always go back and read the NKJV. Go back and read NLT if that's helpful for you. The Amplify version is great. Just always go back because if you're not ready to like fully study the word and break down each particular word, Hebrew, Greek, all the things, at least minimum you can go understand other translations of the verse, which also kind of goes back to the original meaning of some of the words. But anyways, another translation, which I think is the NKJV says, she girds herself with strength and strengthen her arms. So my first question was, when I was reading this, what does girds mean? Like I had no clue what that meant, but I understood that it had to be important if it was originally said in that way in the NKJV, because that's as close to the KJV version that we're gonna get. So that sent me down to, this, to uncover what does gird mean in this G-I-R-D? So girding. The concept of girding oneself with strength is profound. In biblical times, to gird your loins meant to prepare for meant to prepare for something requiring readiness, strength, or endurance. It involved using a cloth or belt to gather up the loose ends of a garment, freeing the legs from movement, and providing support to the abdomen and lower back. This action was often associated with readiness for battle or labor. Visually, think of it as a belt that's being tied around your waist. Like it's something that's keeping all your garments together. And typically it meant like you're, gir you're girding up your loins, like you're getting ready to prepare for war. You're getting ready to prepare for a battle, for a fight. It speaks of power. It speaks of a woman who is preparing for whatever is to come her way, physically, spiritually. It just shows her determination, her resilience, her willingness to face whatever is coming with strength. Like I'm not only preparing for what's coming, but I'm preparing with strength. Like I'm not preparing with worry. I'm not preparing with sorrow. I'm not preparing with sadness. Like I'm preparing with strength. While studying this, I remember asking the Lord, well, what, how do I dress myself in strength? Because another translation was she dresses herself in strength. And so I was like, well, how do I every day dress myself in strength? And I instantly heard like the full armor of God. We are to, as believers, we are to dress ourselves daily in the full armor of God. And the verse right before that, which I'm going to get into, it speaks of the fact that we fight not against flesh and blood. 
and then it tells us to equip ourselves with with a full armor of God, you know that you're not equipping yourself for a physical battle. We are equipping ourselves for a spiritual battle. So that led me like, okay, I need to equip myself with strength every day spiritually. And I think the end of the verse, she reveals that her arms are strong. That kind of can, for me and like in my study that talked about like a woman who's also physically strong. So like taking care of her health, exercise and whatever the case is. And so all that to say, verse 17 led me down a deeper study into Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, I think. Um, which I'll get into. It was so important for me to slow down during this study to understand the full armor of God fully. I've heard it before. I've read it before. The belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. Like I've read these things before, but me being a geek on a word, I was like, well, now I want to go and study each particular protection. I want to understand each particular body part that is meant to protect. So while we're in Proverbs 31, we're going to be in Ephesians 6 today, mostly like 10 through 18. So let me go ahead and get to Ephesians. Okay, so really gonna talk about like understanding spiritual warfare. I know we live in this physical world and you can touch your hands and you can see these pillows and you can touch your hair and you can eat food and taste it and you can see the relationships in front of you. And so we put a lot of focus on the physical, but in reality, the spiritual is more real than the physical. And it's so many verses that equip us for the spiritual. It's so many uh, verses that tell us to die to our flesh. It's so many verses that just talk about the importance of being equipped in the spiritual. We cannot ignore it. While we cannot see it, we cannot ignore it. And I think that unfortunately, that's one of the many things that as believers, like a lot of us struggle with un understanding the spiritual realm, like understanding that the spiritual is not only just as real as, as the physical, but even more real than the physical. So we're going to start with Ephesians 6, um, 10 through 12. And it says, finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. What's the purpose of putting on the full armor of God? It says, put on the full armor of God, why? So that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. We are putting on the full armor of God, basically solely to fight the devil, right? Like basically solely to fight against the schemes of the devil. Why are we fighting against the schemes of the devil? Because we know that we argue not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers of the darkness. So we serve a God that tells us we're going to be in a battle, prepares us for the battle, and gives us the equipment for the battle. We don't want to be serving the little G God of this world who don't prepare you for the for the battle, don't tell you it's a battle, for sure is not telling you how to fight in the battle, not equipping, equipping you with what you need to actually fight the battle. The enemy will give you things that will equip you to fight in this physical world, which will always leave you defeated, offended, tired, anxious, all the things because you're you're not fighting the real battle. Like you're fighting this fake battle and losing in the spiritual where you're really being attacked. And so all we're doing, if you're only focusing on fighting this physical battle with the people in front of you, you're ignoring the spiritual of where the attack truly is. And so in my walk with God, um, I have learned so much about offense and moving away from being offended by the actual person's actions. It's so hard, but it is a level of emotional maturity that I would wish on my greatest enemy because if you can learn that your battle is not with that physical person at your job that battle is not with that physical whoever that you had issues with or that has an issue with you and you can't understand why once you can move into understanding like okay i'm not saying that they're possessed by the devil or anything at the minimum they are being influenced by evil forces at the end of the day you're either being influenced by good or evil even as a christian like you can be influenced to do evil and you can be influenced to do good. And so it's like when I, when you can move away from being offended at everything, that is a level of freedom, like I said, that I would, that I would hope for from my greatest enemy because it allows you to not laugh at situations, but 
really just sit back and say, okay, I know what's at work here. I know how to prepare for this battle. It doesn't sting like it used to. It doesn't offend like it used to. It really just prepares you to understand that the enemy is at work through this person. And so you move away from like being offended and like wholeheartedly wanting to pray for that person. I have experienced that so much all the time to where there, there are things that would have offended me to my core that just don't offend me anymore. Like my, uh, my objective truth just keeps me so grounded because I'm not moved by my feelings. Like I'm not moved by how that situation made me feel. It's just the truth of the matter. If you can move away from the physical offense, the physical hurt and understand who your real battle is against, we can really start to win and edge out and just rise above all these things that are placed in front of us daily, constantly, because they're not going to stop. It's just knowing how to actually, it's really actually equipping yourself to know how to handle these type of situations now. And this is the part that makes spiritual warfare challenging because at the end of the day, I'm I'm in the physical. <laughs> like I'm dealing with these, I'm dealing with people in the physical. And so it's, it, you, you never want to step into becoming a pushover where people feel like they can say whatever to you, treat you whatever type of way. But Jesus tells us, if somebody slaps you on this cheek, give them this cheek to slap too. That's a hard pill to swallow. But could you imagine the confusion of a person who all they're at your neck, they are just going at you, they're upset, they're mad. And as cliche as it is, you kill them with kindness. The confusion that leaves them with, the dissatisfaction that leaves them with, and the satisfaction that, that, that you're able to walk away from, that allows you to know that you succeeded, like you passed the test. Our faith is going to be tested. We're going to be tested daily with the things that we pray for. So if you're praying for a kinder spirit, a, a, a non-confrontational spirit, you better believe that you're going to be faced with confrontation and God is gonna give you the opportunity to look at that and understand that you're not fighting that physical battle like you're fighting in the spiritual and will help you just be able to walk away from situations unscathed, like just unmoved because it's, it's bigger than me. And I understand, like, I understand physically you're upset with me, but I'm going, I'm going to pray for you spiritually. I'm going to walk away from this, the whole same person that I was. And I just pray the same for you. Another verse from within Ephesians is Ephesians 1.20. It tells us that Jesus is enthroned in heaven far above all principalities and powers. Satan does have certain authorities and there are rulers in wicked places, but it tells us that Jesus is far above them. If only we knew our authority in Christ, we understand that they fall under Jesus. And we need to be on the side of Jesus because we need to know our authority so that those dark forces and evil spiritual forces will listen to us. They need to know that we know our authority because they know they know Jesus. They know God is real. It's just nothing they can do to get on the good side of God again. That's why they hate humans so much because we still have the opportunity for salvation. They don't. So their goal is to pull you down. The devil's goal is to keep you as far away from God as possible because he knows that you're still redeemable. He knows that there is salvation still offered for you. There is no redeem redemption. There is no salvation for demons and the devil. We find comfort because Jesus is above them. And so our authority is above them. So while they attack and hit us daily and constantly, I have authority over you. You actually have to submit to what I'm telling you to do, but we got to know our authority in Christ. Um, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 24 tells us that principalities and powers have an end. One day their purpose will be fulfilled and God will no longer let them work. Therefore, God has a purpose in allowing their work. We will never understand the mysteries of God. We will never understand why God allows what he allows, does what he does. But we know that one day they're going to come to an end. So be on the side that doesn't come to an end, that one day we won't come to an end. And so when we give our life to Christ, this is what I talk about, like the sanctification process. It is not enough to give your life to Christ and think that you don't have to put in any effort, any work as you continue to be alive on this earth. Like, yes, we've given our lives to Christ and now prepare for the battle. Now prepare for the real spiritual warfare because let's keep it real, like you were on the side of darkness. So you may not have been getting attacked like you are about to get attacked now because you're on the, you're, you're the ops. <laughs> you are the ops now. And so now you're, you're going to be in a battle against who you're not for anymore. You're going to be in a battle against the other side now. But thank God he equips us with not only what we need, 
But now knowing that we are in Christ, knowing that God sits above the principalities, knowing that one day their order will come to an end, we can operate and fight in the full authority of knowing that we will be victorious in this battle, whether earthly or whether we won't see this until we get in glory, but we're going to win. So fight the good fight. Thank God that he equips us with what we need to fight the good fight and know that we are the ultimate victors in this fight. Be on the side of light. Be on the side of goodness because that the Bible tells us that is the side that's going to win. And so while it looks like darkness is winning, if you look at anything happening in today's world, while it looks like darkness may be winning in your life because you're so depressed, you're so anxious, you don't have you just lost your job. You don't have enough money to pay your rent. Your child is sick. You're sick in your body. While it looks like while it looks like you're losing the battle now, you are not losing the battle. There is victory on the other side. Whether God allows you to experience that physically here on earth or whether you have to wait until you get into heaven to experience it, there is victory in the battle. So so please just as practical as practically as we possibly can understand that we need to daily submit ourselves to God and put on and dress ourselves in the full armor of God to withstand the enemy schemes. Okay, so what is the armor of God? What is this armor of God? What is he equipping us with? What is he preparing us with? So I thought it was very interesting that Paul, who is the writer of Ephesians, he actually wrote Ephesians to the to the Ephesian church when he was in prison. So he was he was constantly around Roman soldiers. He constantly saw their gear, their battle. And so it was easy for him to look at the equipment of guards and to have God speak to him about how believers need to be equipped in the same way as those Roman soldiers, but spiritually. I just thought that was so interesting how they um, my, my Bible mentioned that. And so let's break it down piece by piece. Verse 14. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist and righteousness like armor on your chest. So we've all heard the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. The belt of truth. The belt of truth is what grounds us. We put, you gird your loins. Like going back to verse 17 in Proverbs 31, we need to center ourselves in what is real and what is true. What is objectively true. Not what is true based on how you feel. Not what is true based on anything subjective like it has to be objective truth objectively it is true no matter what the circumstance is like it's reality it's fact it's certainty is moral and religious truth and i know we live in a world where everything is subjective everything is your truth is your truth is however you feel is it is the truth that and that's just not the truth <laughs> like that's just not the truth being centered on what is real and true especially when the world tries to deceive you every day or the enemy tries to deceive you every day and lies to you about god lies to you about the nature of god lies to you about yourself lies to you about the future that god God has for you lies to you about the attitude of God towards you just just lies because the devil is the father of lies and so we're fighting against the father of lies so it is important that the first piece of armor that we equip ourselves with is the truth because we're battling someone that all they do is lie so of course you have to know the truth to be able to battle the lie, to be able to stand against the lie. How are you gonna stand against a lie if you don't even know the truth? We must be strengthened knowing that the truth, like the real truth comes from being in an intimate relationship with God. God will begin to open your eyes and give you so much wisdom, so much revelation, so much clarity, and reading this word will give you so much real truth that you can actively start to stand against the enemy schemes because you're rooted and grounded in the truth is knowing what his word says and standing on it no matter what. So if the word tells me that I battle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces, then that's just the truth. Then I'm not offended like I used to be. The word is the word and the word is the truth. And so I have to be rooted in that. I have to know the truth, stand on it, which will allow me to stand against the lies of the enemy because that's all he does is lie. Breastplate of righteousness um, protects our hearts. Like it, So when you have a breastplate on, it's typically protecting the organs within this area. And the most important organ that we have is our heart because our heart is what keeps us alive. The heart is tied to righteousness because 
within our heart. Our heart has to be postured. Our heart has to want to do what is right or you just won't. Like I know people say all the time, God knows my heart, God knows my heart. I don't even know what that means because yeah, God does know your heart and he also understands that your heart is wicked above all things. It's deceitful above all things. So for sure, he knows your heart. Righteousness is living in a way that reflects God's standards. It's living in a way of where like deep down in your heart, you want to do what is right. Like you strive to do what is right. It is not perfection. It is not condemnation against others. It is just in my heart, in my heart of hearts, I want to do what is right. In my heart of hearts, I want to show kindness. In my heart of hearts, I want to, I want to be loving to my neighbor. In my heart of hearts, I'm being drawn to this person for whatever reason. Like the righteousness in your heart shields you from the enemy's attack on our character. Like my noble character, <laughs> as we have studied in verse 31, is to be a woman of ethical standards. It's just to be a woman who fears the Lord. It's to be a woman who obeys the Lord, who loves the Lord. And so my, my character should reflect the fruits of the spirit. My character should reflect godly characteristics. That breastplate of righteousness is keeping me against the enemy's attack on my character. It's just striving for righteousness. And it makes sense that our heart needs to be protected. Our heart needs to be checked and submitted to God every day. Search my heart, oh Lord, and show me anything that is not like you. Um, show me anything that is unclean in my heart. And so we have to protect our heart and we have to posture our heart towards God. So we got our first pieces of armor, our belt of truth and our breastplate of righteousness. So we're, we're dressing ourselves in strength. We're girding ourselves in strength. And then verse 15, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. So the next thing to put on is are your shoes of the gospel. It's your comeback boots ready to walk around and spread the gospel. So what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel is we have a savior who is God himself, who came in the flesh, lived a perfect sinless life, died a horrendous death on the cross so that we could be forgiven for our sins, so that we would be made righteous in God's sight, so that now Jesus being seated on the right hand of God the Father is interceding for us. We can sit on our couch and talk to God now. We can sit on our couch and have a relationship with God because of what Jesus did, because he left us with the Holy Spirit when he left. So the gospel is is giving your giving your life to Christ because he died for you so that you could have a right standing relationship with God, be justified in God's sight. When you know that, when you know what Jesus did for you, when you know that Jesus has made you righteous and justified in God's sight, when you know that Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit to be able to equip us on our daily walk, when you know that we have the word, when you know that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, we need to put on our shoes of the gospel, which is preparing us to have a footing in everything we do. Our footing, like imagine being in battle with no shoes on. Imagine being in a battle with one shoe on, with some weak shoes on, with unsturdy shoes on. Like we're sturdy in the gospel. We're sturdy in what Jesus did for us. And then verse 16, in every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And so your shield of faith. Faith is just your conviction of the truth. It's just your is your belief in a thing. So I not only know the truth, I believe in the truth. I'm convicted by the truth. I was studying, it says, faith related to God is the conviction that God exists and is the creator and is the ruler of all things. And then relating to Christ is a strong conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is God. So the shield that Paul describes is not a little small shield that's like a circle thing that's just protecting your face. No, it's like a door. It's like one of those big shields that goes from like the top of your head and probably could go all the way to the bottom of your feet. The main thing that's protecting us on the outside is our shield. And so it says that it not only blocks the arrows from the enemy, it extinguishes them, like it puts them out. So if fear comes your way and you put up your shield of faith and you are you have your belt of truth on your breastplate of righteousness your shoes which are the gospel then you should know and we can all strive to know that ensure that we know the word we know that god does not give me god doesn't give me a spirit of fear so not only does my shield block that arrow from hitting my truth, from hitting my heart, it also puts it out because I know that's not even from God. So I'm not even gonna allow that arrow to come through. I'm not even gonna allow that fear to come through. I'm not even going to allow that worry to come through. So when worry comes my way, 
is knowing that in the Bible it says that worry will not add, will not add a single second to your life. So why am I going to allow that to come through when I know what the word says? I know the truth of the matter is, yes, we all worry, but we all can rest assured and know that worry is not going to change anything. And so it's like the minute those thoughts come your way, it's submitting them to Christ. Submit all thoughts to Christ and they must be obedient to him. It's just like your shield is what keeps you protected before everything, before the arrows start to attack your heart, before the arrows start to attack your truth, before the arrows start to attack the gospel that you're spreading, like your faith should block most of it. And then if your faith doesn't block it, so if, if you're not truly convicted in a certain area, if you're not truly equipped with the word in this certain area and it gets by to your truth, then let's pray and hope that our truth is built on the word. Let's hope that our heart at least wants to be made right. So when evil presents itself, at least in my heart, Heart, I'm striving to do what's right. I may not know all the theology. I may not can tell you what First John three ten and Proverbs three one says. But in my heart, I want to know God. In my heart, I'm striving to know God. In my heart, I'm desiring to do what is right. And then we have our helmet of salvation, verse seventeen. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So our last two items are the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So the helmet of salvation protects our minds. It is what reminds us that our identity is in Christ and it, secure, and it secures our thoughts against the enemy's lies. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 speaks of the helmet of salvation in connection to the hope of salvation. So, so, so your helmet of salvation is your hope in salvation. Like we're hopeful that we are, we are saved. Like God has saved us. We're also hopeful that he is saving us for eternity. The helmet of salvation can protect you against discouragement. As discouragement comes our way and the enemy tries to attack our mind is remembering that yes, while I may face certain struggles, yes, while um, certain things may not be going my way, like my hope, the hope in my mind, what I'm looking forward to is the fact that I have hope in salvation. I am saved now and I will be saved for eternity. It's just like in a video I posted earlier is moving from having a earthly focus and shift into like having an eternal focus, allowing your mind to focus on eternity, allowing your mind to focus on what's to come heavenly because earth is going to die. Like the earth is going to die. The heavens are going to pass away and there will be a new heaven. There will be a new earth. And so it's just as best as possible, learning how to navigate life with the lens of an eternally perspective, like an eternal perspective, it'll give you calm in the storm. It'll give you peace in the storm. You can be on that boat when Jesus was asleep and the waves was rocking. Cause he's like, we're going to be straight. I know that it feels like we're not right now, but it's going to all pan out. Okay, and then we have the sword. The sword is the only weapon of offense. Everything else is defensive. Everything else is protecting us. Everything else is like keeping us protected. The sword is the one weapon that we can step forward with and actually do damage to the enemy. Everything else was just protecting us from him. We didn't have any like true way to attack and kill him until we get our, until we have our sword in our hand. Everything else is just keeping him annoyed with us because he cannot get to us. But now with this sword, I can actually kill you. I can actually destroy you. The sword is the word of God. It's knowing our word so that we can use our word, use the word of God against the enemy. Most of us have learned about Jesus being in the garden of Gethsemane, fasting for 40 days, 40 night. The devil tried to tempt him and he responded to the devil's tempt with the word of God. Well, didn't God say this? No, actually the word says this. And so the enemy, okay, well, let me try this other way. Won't you just throw yourself over the building? God said that he will send his angels to protect you. Okay, no, but the word also says, don't tempt God. And so, and, and that destroys him. Like he's like, man, I can't, I can't get through to this person at all because they're hitting me with the word. And Satan knows the word. So we need to know the word because he knows the word, but he just manipulates it, flips it, and, and presents it in ways that are just contradictory of what that word actually says. But he knows it. He knows what it says. The enemy responds. I saw this. I, I studied this. The enemy responds to the word of God and has to obey it because he knows it's the truth. The word of God destroys the enemy. The word of God defeats the enemy. So God has been like challenging me to focus on 
like remembering scripture, like memorizing it, being able to like pinpoint scripture for certain situations, praying over my kids with specific verses, praying over specific situations with what the word of God says about that specific situation. So not just studying for studying sake, studying to study to learn, but to have it penetrate in my heart, to have me actively apply it to my daily walk, actively apply it to my life. You know, I wanna be someone who can say, you know, you know, well, did you know that in James 3.12, it says this? Did you know that in Proverbs 31.17, it tells women to dress ourselves in strength? I want to be able to not come across as like a theologian and a know-it-all, but God is challenging me to know his word because if, I mean, I know the words to a lot of things, right? Like we know words to a lot of things. I want to know the word that's in this Bible. And so even if like I can't get to the point where I can actively say, what verse says to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, but I know that scripture, that scripture is penetrated in my heart. So I don't want to get wrapped up on like just learning and memorizing for memory's sake either, but I wanna be well equipped with the word. I wanna be a student of the word. Okay, so lastly, how do we apply this? First, we must be aware that we're in a battle. That's first and foremost. We have to be aware that we're in a battle. We have to be aware that we are in a spiritual battle and not a physical battle. And so that awareness helps us to be prepared, strong, and just prepare for the battle that's in front of us. Next, we need to, now that we prepared and know that we are in a battle, we're going to be in a battle, now we need to equip ourselves with what we need to not only fight in the battle, but, but win in the battle. So it's every day. Lord, fill me with your truth. Lord, Lord, turn my heart towards you. Lord, protect my heart today. Lord, allow my mind to be renewed in you today. Lord, allow my mind to be focused on you today. Lord, allow my faith to be so rooted in you that nothing can, can get past it. And if it does get past it, I have everything else on me equipped to, to, to fight off against these things. Lord, help me to spread the gospel today. Lord, help me to be rooted in Jesus today. Lord, help me to use my sword against the enemy today. Help me to be equipped for my day through you, through the strength that you provide. So Proverbs 31, 17, you know, reminds us that we must guard ourselves with strength, spiritually and physically. And then Ephesians 6 shows us what spiritual armor looks like, what dressing with strength actually looks like, what it actually entails and what it actually means piece by piece. And then like, finally, let's not forget that we're not in this battle alone. We are on the side of victory. It may look like we're losing right now. It may look like the devil is winning right now. In some instances, it may appear that way. But in the long run, we are on the winning side. We are on the winning team. So leave encouraged that, yes, we will fight in a battle. Um, yes, we will face things in life. Yes, we will be tested in life. Yes, our character will be called into question. These, As we become women of noble character, as we submit ourselves to the Lord, that is when the attacks will get stronger, unfortunately. That is when you're going to be tested more than you ever have to actually show that you are trying your best to live out this Christian walk, to actually show that you have fruits of the spirit, like to actually show that you are image bearer. We're going to be presented opportunities to show that. And so I just encourage all of us to um, prepare for the battle, dress for the battle, but also know that we're not in this battle alone. You have brothers and sisters in Christ around you. And then we have the almighty God on our side. We have Jesus interceding for us. We have the Holy Spirit who lives in us to get us through day to day. So yes, Proverbs 31 led us into the full armor of God. I just love where this, I just love where this is taking us, where it is taking me. Next week, we'll see where we are. We'll at least be in 18 onwards. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I love y'all. Bye.